President Trump is refusing to concede to Joe Biden. And now Attorney General William Barr is authorizing possible investigations into voter fraud. And that's prompted a top prosecutor to resign in protest. The head of election crimes resigning overnight after Attorney General William Barr issued a new policy to U.S. attorneys telling them to pursue substantial allegations of voting and vote tabulation irregularities. Investigations of voter fraud would typically begin after state certified results, weeks after an election. And now President-elect Joe Biden's team is threatening legal action if the General Services Administration fails to formally recognize the election results. Traditionally, the General Services Administration ascertains the winning candidate, allowing them to access a variety of resources for the transition of power. The head of the agency, appointed by Trump in 2017, says she has not determined a winner is clear. The fact that they're not willing to acknowledge we won at this point is uh, not of much consequence in our planning and what we're able to do between now and January 20th. Is the State Department currently preparing to engage with the Biden transition team? And if not, at what point does a delay hamper a smooth transition or pose a risk to national security? There will be a smooth transition to We're ready. The, the world is watching what's taking place. We're going to count all the votes. When the process is complete, there'll be electors selected. There's a process. The Constitution lays it out pretty clearly. The U.S. surpassing a staggering 10 million COVID-19 infections, the highest number of reported cases in any nation. In the past week, roughly 74 Americans were diagnosed every minute. We have reached a very dangerous phase in, in the pandemic. Every state is reporting an increase in cases. Governors in California, New York, and other states are now hinting at new restrictions. Mayor Bill de Blasio with a stern warning to New York City residents. So we have one last chance to stop a second wave. That second death wave already crashing over some parts of the country. In El Paso, Texas, hospitals are so full, the state shipped in med surge tents. And in recent days, county officials have added a 10th mobile morgue to help keep up with the climbing death rate. The Supreme Court hearing arguments this morning on the legality of the Affordable Care Act. 18 Republican-led states are trying to get the ACA thrown out. 21 million Americans will lose health insurance nationwide if the law is struck down. And protections for 54 million people with pre-existing conditions could also be eliminated. The court upheld the Affordable Care Act in two previous cases. But now there's a greater conservative majority on the bench after President Trump appointed three justices. The law's challengers, including 18 states led by Texas, are urging the court to rule that Obamacare's individual mandate, which requires nearly all Americans to get health insurance or pay a tax, is unconstitutional. The Trump administration has not revealed a replacement for the law if it's overturned. A two-year Vatican investigation finds bishops, cardinals, and even popes downplayed or dismissed reports of abuse for decades by defrocked Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. We publish uh, the report uh, with sorrow for the wounds uh, that the matter has caused to the victims, their families, the church in the United States, and the Universal Church. The trust of many faithful people in the church has been damaged. With record numbers of COVID infections sweeping the country, experts say shoppers are starting to stock up again, fearing another round of shortages in stores in the coming months. Grocery chain Kroger announcing on Monday it's bringing back product limits to help prevent those shortages, limiting purchases of toilet paper, paper towels, disinfecting wipes and hand soap to two per customer. Grocer HEB is also putting limits on paper products and disinfectant wipes in some of its stores again. Last week on a quarterly earnings call, Clorox announced it is still not at a point where we can fully meet ongoing elevated demand, predicting that the shortages on its wipes and disinfectants will continue through the end of the year. While experts say it's unclear yet if they'll see shortages, they have seen an early surge in holiday mainstays, especially those that are non pay like boxed stuffings and canned goods. Spices still seeing sky-high sales are another category that could soon be in low supply. A new tribute to Alex Trebek, coming from the show's executive producer. He loved this show and everything it stood for. The game show icon honored during the first episode after his death. He will forever be an inspiration for his constant desire to learn, his kindness, and for his love of his family. Fans of the show are looking ahead. Upon your retirement, who would you like to see replace you? 
Betty White. <laughs> Several names already in the running for possible replacements include two names previously floated by Trebek, hockey announcer Alex Faust and legal analyst Laura Coates. The New York Post also reporting ABC's George Stephanopoulos is eyeing the job, but a source close to Stephanopoulos denies he's pursuing the role. Another possible successor, Jeopardy champ Ken Jennings, who was recently named consulting producer. Jeopardy will air the final 35 episodes featuring Trebek through Christmas. Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z with some really awful photos behind me from South Florida. So this is Miami Gardens, Florida. North Miami had eight inches of rain with those bands from Ada up to nearly 18 inches in Miramar. And so they've been so saturated this year, Miami could end up with the wettest or close to the wettest year on record. There are places in South Florida that are reporting close to 100 inches rest estimated on radar. Now, Ada really aided that those totals, but now it's all the way northwest of Cuba still throw in some of the tropical moisture at South Florida and it will and that's why through Wednesday evening there are flood watches from West Palm through Hollywood Miami through the Keys and back up to Naples and Marco Island but what I really want to focus on is where does it go next and it's nowhere fast is really the answer so it's gonna take its sweet time nearly stationary this morning and it's gonna inch toward the Gulf Coast through the weekend even and then the end of the weekend it looks like somewhere along the Gulf Coast the cone is very large still so Florida Panhandle all the way to southeastern Louisiana, just keep an eye on this. The good news is it looks like it gets absorbed a bit as it gets closer, but either way you could end up somewhere along there with uh, four to six inches of heavy rain and that could cause some flash flooding. That's all for today and remember to subscribe to our channel, like and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.